many different options of stuff I could talk about down here all day long. But we're going to focus attention on this guy. We get a lot of questions relating to excavator size. What would work good for running a mulcher head? It's something that still is in a weight category that you can transport it with a 3500 and a, you know, a couple 12K axle trailer. And the Takahuchi 290 is what I'm going to be looking at today. It's got the FAA head on it. That's a little bit bigger model. We're waiting on Jim to get the keys and we're going to go give this thing a rip. Before we run that, we got a little fan mail. A young fellow named Morgan Voss sent something to Jim and I. I'm going to go through it. Seems like a pretty outstanding young man. <laughs> He's got some good letters here. I'm going to read them on my own. Look at these. That's what you like to see. Young kids working on engines rather than goofing off. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Thanks for the score, Morgan. Keep up the good work. He's got all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> well, I just tracked it about three miles so we can mow this down. All right, sir. Give me the details on this machine. Takuchi TB290. Uh, it's about a 19,400 pound machine. It's got uh, dual auxiliary circuits, factory plums out to the end of the stick, a thumb circuit, and a high flow circuit set. Uh, we can run about 26 gallons on that high flow circuit. We can put another slice in and get about 36 gallons out of that uh, oh, wow. high flow circuit. You guys plumb in the case drain? We plumb the case drain in and we'll put the uh, the oil box in for the electronics to run that front rear hood on the FADML HY 100 head. What's the horsepower? 69 horsepower. 69. What I want to find out today is we have a Kubota 080. It's a slightly older machine, but it's been good to us. and. We've got uh, 2,300 hours on it. We have the same head except for the shorter um, drum length, I guess. And the problem with that rig is being older. It does run the head pretty good, but the boom functions going up seem to struggle. So that's what I want to see today is how this new machine, this is a 19 or a 20? Uh, this is a 19. Pretty much. 19. Pretty, it's new enough for what we're here for. So we'll find out if she keeps up with it and. This would be the machine for kind of like... AX080 is a, almost a direct copy of the 290. Yeah. The Tak Takuchi is the original designer manufacturer of compact excavators. They introduced the uh, uh, compact excavator to the world in I believe, 1969. Uh, they are also the uh, uh, designer uh, of the compact track loader. That was first uh, developed in the 1980s, introduced to North America in 1992. And I believe Bobcat was their first competitor with a track version in 1998. All the other manufacturers have come after. So Takuchi is the innovator. Um, they're always copied. Hmm. Uh, it's kind of weird. I do own a Takuchi. Yeah. I didn't really know any of yeah. that. <laughs> Ta Takuchi builds all of their carriers, whether it's an excavator or the compact track loaders, the the main frames, and a lot of the uh, the undercarriage. Those are engineered and designed to outlast the engine and hydraulic system. Okay. So we have a lot of machines out there that are uh, at 10,000, pushing 10,000 or over 10,000 hours, and it's not uncommon for uh, Takuchi machines to to uh, achieve those uh, hour intervals with proper uh, maintenance. Well, how about you run it first and get her warmed up? Because I don't know the uh, how to turn the head on. <laughs> turn it on. I want to see you run it first. Oss, you want to run it first? We're all scared. So what are we looking at display? So on the display, you can change. We have three, or we can put three factory presets in on our auxiliary hydraulic flow. So right now we have it set for a cutter wheel. So you can also 
put my second. If you take the cutter wheel off, you're going to go to a grapple. All you're doing is, is switching your auxiliary function to a grapple. It's adjusting all of the presets we put in for the auxiliary flow for the grapple. And then you can also do a, uh, uh, a third function. So you set your three main yeah. attachments and we can set the flows for the uh, parameters of those attachments. Because like on the skid steer, I wanted to find the happy medium between good power to the head and when the head was bogging down, that obviously absorbs all the power the machine potentially has trying to get the head back going. Right. So I turned down the head a couple percent so that I would still have track in some boom functions right. versus losing everything and setting it up for the attachment. Yeah, yeah it's as easy as going into our display, go down to our traction yeah. function, go into that. There's our auxiliary. Right here, we can adjust our presets. Holy crap! Yeah, so, you got to reduce that 130 <laughs> percent. Yeah, so we're running right now. We have it set at 25 gallons mm -hmm. going to the head, uh, which should allow now the head that the RPM we have about 100 RPM to play with on the head. So at 130 at 25 gallons, if you are a little sluggish on the boom, you say I want a little bit more. It's just a matter of going in and bumping that down to uh, get go down to 24 gallons. Mm -hmm. Your head's still going to be within the parameters. So then you can run it if you like that. Great. You get on other material where flatter, uh, you want more uh, head performance, you go ahead and bump it up to 26. That's better. This thing already moves faster than the 80, I can feel it. Yeah. machines it's so much of a, the idea is a specialty kind of a tool something that's going to reach down along the bond dam something you can't get a track machine down to we got sucked up a garbage bag get able to use what you got the best way you can so Understanding this thing's using a lot of horsepower to run that head, I don't want to lose that power with the boom not moving around. The cab is so much bigger, the controls feel awesome with the head on, it just working it. And that's a bigger head than what we got on our machine. out there I'd have to kill the head on the other one. Not a problem with this one. Power 
power is freaking awesome. Don't pump it. anything big to try it on but just the functionability of the head being on wide open throttle right now I can still boom around comfortably fast. I'll show you that's boomed out kind of halfway head on head off the speed definitely picks up with the head off I went ahead and tracked it across there and he can just drive it up the road because obviously their yard's right there, but we had to circle like three buildings to get back here. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're trying to sell equipment for a living, this is how you do it. You just let somebody run it. I was thinking about this the other day when it comes to buying a new pickup. You buy a new pickup, you drive it around, but you're not actually using it. You know, if you're gonna be towing with it, you wanna test it towing. That's another thing with that FAE head. He's running right next to the road. Hood on both sides, it contains that debris very, very well. But they outdo themselves down here in Global. Takahuchi, I didn't know too much about them, but I knew they sold them. And uh, I test drove that TL12, and well, loved it, still love it. Almost 300 hours on it now. No issues. She's rocking and rolling every bit of what I hoped out of a skid steer. Then when it comes time to upgrade the 080, this would be 100% the machine to get. So we're talking a couple more ducks in a row and I'd like to get one of these. It's a lot smoother. There's controls on it that I like. The 080 might be a little different, but I don't like how ours, you gotta get into it and uh, turn on the hydraulic flow to the head. You gotta hit a different button to just turn it on, to turn the function on, and then you gotta hit the trigger to actually engage the head. This one, you just hop in and you can drop the bar, go to town with it. Jim's running it right now. Cab space is awesome. Pilot controls are awesome. For being, it's under, uh, it's under 75 horsepower, so. You don't have to have depth. Booming out like that, our head's smaller with the Kubota. Going over the side load of the track, go up and down on it. I can get that back track to bop up the ground, no problem. This one, it seems very stable. It's not one to tilt the whole machine. And it weighs literally the same as what the 080 weighs. Backup camera, it's got a side working light. Boom lights, the works, obviously cabs, heat and air. Ah. Just do a quick overview. We would get the boreway blade and already come set up with a joystick and electronics and stuff for it. They're all pilot controls. And the four-way blade would just tilt side to side. Not to do grade kind of a thing, just kind of to cut an angle. Oh, this is it's a nice unit though, Takahuchi. They're definitely growing on me. Oh yeah, that's a different video. You guys see that? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. A lot of improvements over our old machine. I'll definitely admit that. Um, 
But as far as you gotta have a CDL to haul this, it's that kind of weight, but uh, you don't need a semi to haul it. Technically, you can haul it new 3500 and up trucks. They are more than capable rating wise to haul it. That truck's rated to 30,000. I can completely legally haul that no problem with that setup right there. So as far as not having to spend too much, but then trying to get the most out of your buck, 290, very capable to run ahead. Again, it's not very high production, not in the standpoint that the, hoist, the horsepower is not the greatest, but it's just a smaller Moultrie head. This one's actually about 10 inches wider than ours, the cutting width, which is actually nice. Uh, I've very noticed that. But uh, it's got knives on it right now for low flow applications such as excavators. Knives are definitely a plus, but this one you can get carbides for it. So when you're just doing strictly blackberries, say around a pond or something, you can reach down um, be grinding, hit a rock, and it's not the end of the world because the carbide can handle it. You can get different options for tracks. You get the standard rubbers or you get these aftermarket rigs. But anyway, we're going to end it here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, but at the end of the day, don't completely listen to anybody's advice. My advice, anybody's advice, go out. If you're going to spend this kind of money, even though it's not the most expensive machine, it is still very, very much uh, money. It's a lot of money so you go out and test drive it yourself see if you like it call jim rick bill any of them down here at global machinery west they have one in colorado also they're more than willing to get you some seat time in their machine i spent an hour in this thing today just screwing around and mowed their field for them out there comment below what excavator you guys prefer in life what brand takahushi for dealer support is definitely really growing on me uh, and then the machines just sit in one it'll speak for itself awesome we'll see you guys in the next one later like comment subscribe